Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Dear Princess Celestia, the show where I take an episode and analyze its moral. Today's episode, or episodes, A Canterlot Wedding. Dear Princess Celestia, When Twilight first heard that her brother was getting married, she was very upset because she wasn't told this in person. She got the idea that Shining Armor didn't view her as important anymore. Twilight felt distanced and angry, when really her assumptions weren't true at all. Shining put her concerns to rest by explaining how busy he was protecting Carolot and such. Moral number one, don't assume the worst about people. Twilight found out that Shining had a valid reason for not directly telling her the news, and shouldn't have jumped to the conclusion that something had happened to their relationship. Now there is a balance to this. While you shouldn't necessarily assume the worst, don't assume the best either. Here's what I mean. Twilight knew something was up about Cadence. She was acting super fishy and didn't even recognize Twilight. This was a pretty big red flag, but literally every other person bought into the lies. Chrysalis even had Celestia convinced. I'm not saying Twilight assuming the worst about Cadence was good, but she's the only one who thought critically about the scenario. So don't assume the worst, but don't be blind to what's going on. Next, let's look at the accusation scene. This scene was, in my opinion, the most emotional scene in the entire show. Viewing this for the first time, the audience didn't know if Twilight's claims were right or wrong. But both ways, we all felt pretty horrible when Shining Armor was explaining all of Cadence's suspicious behavior. Watching Twilight get rejected by her closest brother, her friends, and her biggest idol was gut-wrenching. But directly afterwards, Twilight's suspicions were confirmed, showing her that Cadence was, after all, evil. But what if Chrysalis, in the form of Cadence, never banished Twilight? Would she have believed Shining Armor and given up? Or would she have been stubborn and stuck to the worst assumption? Unfortunately, we can never know. Twilight didn't have to choose, since Chrysalis made the truth quite obvious. And despite what Celestia said, Twilight never had the chance to persist in the face of doubt. It's all up for speculation, but I think she would have given up in fear of losing more friends. Speaking of losing friends, why were the other five so unsupportive in this two-parter? Twilight was so fixed on Cadence being evil and was full of concern for her brothers, but the others brushed these off as Twilight being overpossessive. While Twilight was certainly being overpossessive, her friends should have at least listened. They weren't taking Twilight's problems seriously. Whether they agreed with her or not doesn't matter, but they should have helped her out more supportively. Wait a second, this is sounding awfully familiar. Oh yeah, lesson zero. Similar to A Canterlot Wedding Part 1, in Lesson Zero, Twilight was extremely concerned. The other five disregarded Twilight's problem. I mean, it was just a silly due date. It's true that there was nothing to be concerned about, but the other five noticed they should have taken her distress more seriously. After all, Twilight has been known to be mentally fragile at times. By the end, they even took responsibility for the disaster Twilight had caused. But we thought that the thing that she was worrying about wasn't worth worrying about. So when she ran off all worked up, not a single one of us tried to stop her. As Twilight's good friends, we should have taken her feelings seriously and been there for her. Now fast forward to the season finale. Twilight made a similar disaster, but this time, her friends were out. No support whatsoever. Um, friendship is magic? Yeah, this was a lesson they should have known by now. Always be there for your friends. While these guys didn't show a good example of the magic of friendship, Shining and Cadence did. Their friendship was the power that ultimately saved Equestria, even when Celestia's power didn't compare. So yeah, friendship is magic. What did you guys think about this two-parter and its morals? Also, which episode should I analyze next? Leave your thoughts in the comments. This is the Brony Notion, signing out until next Wednesday. Brohoof.